Hi. Well, here I am, downtown El Rito. Doesn't seem like the town folk have woken up yet. <laughs> And I feel really good, and I needed that rest after a couple of tough days. The kindness of strangers will never get old. Thank you so much, Ted, for letting me stay there. Uh oh, doggies, there's a lot of dogs in this state. Hey, buddy, ooh, you look dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, good thing I'm leaving. Ah, oh, no flatties, no crashies. Why well, is it no crashies first, then no flatties, and no whammies. And how about no dog chases? Ooh, look at this church. My first 17 miles today are gonna to be on pavement, which is nice. Going to a little town called Abiquiu. And then I head out into the wilderness. No services after that. So, should be an awesome day. It's Friday. Okay, I just wanted to show you this. There are family dollars all over the United States and they're always kind of junky looking, but this is the nicest looking family do dollar I've ever seen. It's got the nice Southwestern look. I have made it to Abiquiu. They have a great little convenience store gas station here. Check it out. I got a big fat burrito. I'm gonna need it because going up now, about 8,000 feet of elevation toward a town called Cuba. I love this country of Cuba, so maybe the town of Cuba is awesome. I don't know. And this is what the inside of these New Mexico burritos look like with all that good green chili. So you wouldn't believe it. I'm sitting here eating my burrito and guess who calls? It's John and Mira. Say hi, John. Hey, Ryan. Hi, everybody. How you doing today? <laughs> I really wish you were here, man. Yeah, we do too. I'm sitting here with Mira. She would love to be on a trip with you down south. Yeah, I need some mirror love right now. <laughs> I had a I had a rough couple yeah. days, man. How how you doing? You, you, you equipped for it? Yeah, I'm equipped for it. It's just it's just hard. <laughs> you know, yeah. sometimes bike trips get hard. Yeah, totally. It makes you appreciate the good times for sure. Absolutely. It's nice that you have the dry clean you do. That's probably uh, that's yep. a big plus. The pinion and gates have been treating me well, and you know I'm out of the snow. I don't think I'm gonna hit snow anymore, so I'm, I'm happier. I'm moving. I'm actually riding my bike, not pushing it anymore. But uh, I was definitely thinking of you guys up there when I was on top of the mountain pushing through snow. I was like, you know what? Mira wouldn't care about this. Mira would be psyched. <laughs> oh, she would love it. <laughs> More than psyched. That's but I might have, I might have stolen her to to cuddle with me in the tent. It was a little cold. <laughs> well, yeah. wish me luck, bud. Yeah, good luck, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Here we go. Powered by frijoles, heading uphill. Very, very up from what the map looks like. That's all good, because I've got all day to do it. And all I have to do today is ride my bike. And that's pretty awesome. These small towns that I've been riding through are definitely a little rough around the edges. They kind of remind me of the village. village I, be quiet, dog. I'm trying to talk and make a YouTube video. <laughs> they kind of remind me of the village I lived in in Honduras. You hear like chickens and roosters in the morning and cows everywhere. I'm riding past the gatekeepers now. Hey guys. All right, no more pavement. Time for dirt. people ask me if I listen to music on my bike tours and I don't. I like being in tune with my surroundings 
for safety's sake, but more than anything, I love the sound of my tires crunching gravel. Makes me happy. And the occasional bird song or the wind blowing through the trees. Because when you're out here, at least for me, I really like just being out here and not escaping through music or a podcast. There's no right way to do it. This is just the way I like to do it. I like to be here. And part of that is just no distractions, except for talking to this camera. <laughs> Look at those curly cues. That can mean only one thing, steep. I am crawling up this hill. That's all right, three miles an hour is the perfect speed for right now. And my bike is really heavy. It's full of food and it has max capacity of water because from here on out, pretty much, there's not gonna be a lot of water, not a lot of running streams. So I'm gonna have to be very careful about my water supply. stopping and checking out the flowers and there haven't been too many flowers the first few days was covered in snow and it's just they haven't started blooming yet but I just found my first flower right here and I think it's called an Indian paintbrush and that gives you an idea of where I came from way out there that's where I've been riding and I've only just begun the uphill the first uphill today was just a little warm up. Now, I'm really going up. Here's those rough roads everybody talks about in New Mexico. These are definitely the roughest roads on the divide that I've seen so far. They might even get rougher, who knows? But yeah, it's a lot of little, what they call baby head rocks. Little rocks look like baby heads. So it's, uh, it's slow going and it's bouncy. And uh, that's just the way it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's flat, flat and smooth and you go fast. And sometimes it's like this and it's a little obstacle course and you have to pick a line through the rough stuff. <laughs> yeah, buddy. The real deal right here. You know sometimes when you get a random song stuck in your head? Well, right now, Yellow Submarine is stuck in my head. We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine. I feel like my bike computer is messing with me. That little arrow there, that's where I am. And it's been there for like two hours, it seems like. I haven't made any ground. Or maybe this is just the, the biggest hill in the history of the world. Oh boy, I've already gone up 3,800 feet and I'm at 9,000 feet. So it's definitely getting cooler and it looks like there's a bit of a storm or something brewing. I'm getting rained on ever so slightly. Let's call it a misting. And it feels great actually. I can't imagine doing some of these sections in the heat of the summer. Right now my computer says it's 54 degrees, which is 
kind of perfect, but in July, August, I can only imagine that it's 85 and above, which would make this very difficult. It's been an hour and a half since I last checked in. I'm making a little progress. Uppy downy, uppy downy. And I'm definitely not in the desert anymore. Back to the high alpine. Even have aspen trees, my favorite tree. And check it out, I found another flower. The good old dandelion. Oh no, it's snow. Get out of here, snow, I'm done with you. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna have to deal with snow. It's just on the sides of the road. But when I see it now, I'm like, what's gonna happen? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get my revenge on the snow and eat it. Look at that. that actually looks pretty good. Mmm. I came riding around this corner here and I looked up ahead and I saw this big black thing under a tree and I was like, oh my God, what is that? I really thought it was a bear, bear but nope. It's just one of these guys, just a high altitude moo cow. Hey buddy. This here is the mountain that won't quit. It keeps going up and up and up. And I usually love uphill, I mean, that's my thing. But man, this is getting old. It's time to go downhill. <laughs> Look, I did it! Woo! Top of the mountain. I think I'm at the top. I can see further on, on the map, that there's some more ups, but for the most part, I'm at the highest point of today, and I am at 10,327 feet. Woo! some cold rain at 10,000 feet. Whoa, it's chilly. I need to get down and I need to get down fast. got some seriously rough roads here. Wow. This is a this is the real deal here. It's like riding through a riverbed. <laughs> Yee -hoo. It's time. I'm finally going to stop pedaling. I was in a groove there. Just put my head down and went. Bah! And you know when I got to the top of that mountain earlier, 
it really wasn't the top because it went down and went up it went down and went up and check it out i went up let's see 7700 feet in elevation today 75 miles nine hours of riding time and i'm at 9200 feet elevation i'm happy with that i'm psyched and i found a nice green spot to camp right here and hopefully it won't rain on me i've been in and out of rain all afternoon but i feel pretty good about things this was a hard day it really was new mexico definitely makes you earn the miles <laughs> nothing comes easy here these were 75 very hard miles but my body feels good and uh, my spirit does too and that might be even more important all right ladies and gentlemen this is the lineup for friday night supreme dinner we've got rosarita organic refried beans hatch green chilies from the state of new mexico and tapatio hot sauce i've been dreaming about something like this all day because i've been eating mostly sweet stuff so it's gonna be nice to have something savory on the menu blah, 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 blah. oh and the sun just came out for the first time in eight hours look at that okay oh but we're not finished no 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 time for tapatio so we call this christmas with the green and the red and that's what it looks like doesn't that look good there's nothing quite like eating food out in the wild after you've earned it it tastes so much better no matter what it is like if i was at home and i made this burrito i'd be like that's kind of mediocre but here best burrito i've ever had in my life <laughs> mm, so good so every day on any bike tour at the end of the day after i eat i like to go on a walk it helps loosen my muscles and stretch myself out because when you're sitting on a bike you know hunched over for nine hours you get a little tight and i also use my walking time just to think about the day and reminisce and you know plan for tomorrow because there's so many things that happen that you need to keep track of you know navigation and nutrition and filming and are the batteries charged and all the you know the SD cards and blah, there's just so much going on in my mind that I like to walk at the end of the day. And usually I don't film this, it's my alone time, but I thought I would just take you along on tonight's walk. It's beautiful. Turns out it's not gonna rain, which makes me very happy. And uh, today was good. Today I really just went internal. I reminisced a lot about life. You know, we've all had such a weird year. This pandemic has been bizarre in so many ways and it feels so good to be back out here doing what I love and seeing people and hugging them you know and I'm vaccinated now and you know I always make sure other people I hug are vaccinated but it just feels so good to like to be interacting with humans ah, it had been a whole year of like really not much interaction right and that's tough for guys like Ryan <laughs> you know most humans we need human connection so I'm very, very grateful that uh, things seem to be getting better. We're not completely out of this yet, but things are getting better and uh, it makes me happy and it fills my heart with joy, but also I, I'm dreaming about the future and the possibilities, you know, after a, a dormant year of just barely any travel, it's, I feel charged up, but like I'm ready to just rock and roll. <laughs> And this is how my nightly walks usually go. I just have these thoughts and I think and they're, you know, scattered and but they, they help me calm down after a long day on the bike and I sleep easier. So thank you all for joining me once again. I hope you enjoyed today. I sure did. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. That's how it works. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I got a long way to go. Like, 500 more miles. I'm not really making a whole lot of distance on this trip, but that's all right. 